There are three ways in which I've emotionally detached from my partner, so in my case, my husband, and I'm gonna share with you why it's important and why it's not heartless, and yes, I am obsessed and totally head over heels in love with my partner, but since I started doing this, our relationship has gotten so much better. Hi everyone, Mireille Nicole here. I'm a relationship coach, and today I wanna share with you guys three ways I've emotionally detached from my husband and kinda share with you what that looks like, what that means, and why I did that. It seems every time I talk about emotional detachment, people kind of get shocked or upset or accuse me of being kind of heartless or it being, you know, kind of unhealthy or cold or whatnot, but really emotional detachment is just being able to look at your emotions and your feelings objectively in a way that allow you to respond appropriately and lovingly to your partner and showing up as the best version of yourself. So I did a whole video on the difference between being emotionally detached and emotionally unavailable. I'll link to it here and you'll see the difference between the two. And I do agree that being emotionally unavailable can be kind of cold or harsh and you have to be more careful in that area. But when it comes to emotional detachment, that's something super healthy. So that's what we're going to talk about here today, the healthy aspect of emotional detachment in your relationship, in your dating life, in your love life in general. The first way I've emotionally detached from my partner that I don't share often on this channel is the whole idea of detaching from timelines. So a lot of times I work with women and obviously they come to me and they want to get a certain result as quickly as possible, right? That's the whole objective and the whole goal of coaching is to help you achieve something much faster than you would on your own. However, the flip side or the downside of that is that we can get very attached to how much time it takes for our partner to either change. I, I hate using that word. Obviously, we're not making our partner change, but how fast they see changes in the relationship or in the dynamic between them and their partner. And this precise thing is something I've totally detailed attached from and it's helped me immensely, right? When we put pressure on ourselves to see things happen, to see our partner respond in a certain way, immediately it can be very discouraging. It might make us think that there's no hope for our relationship. It might make us think our partner will never change, right? Or things will never get better when in fact things take time. Everything that's good and worthwhile in life is going to take a certain amount of time to achieve or to get there. And the thing is, and the thing we have to remember is a lot of times what's happening in the relationships is there is a lack of skill and just to take some ownership of that sometimes our skills need some time to develop and the result that we see in a relationship is often dependent on how quickly we adopt the new habits the new changes or the new skills that we're learning in love to be completely honest with you guys it took me like 30 sessions of working with expert support to flip things around in my relationship to make things better again Again, to bring us back to that honeymoon phase. In fact, to bring us in a better place than our honeymoon phase. So this isn't something that happened overnight, even for me. So I would never want you to think that you're supposed to see things happen magically really quickly. I do believe that are, there are certain things that can happen super quick. Like I see amazing results in women after four weeks of just tweaking little things. As long as they're consistent, dedicated, and they do it exactly the way it's supposed to be, then results yes, can happen quickly, but there are certain things that, you know, you got to remember that you've probably been in the situation for a while now. These patterns, these feelings, this resentment, whatever's going on in your relationship has probably been happening for years now. And I'm not saying again that it's going to have to necessarily take years, but it could take a while, right? So it's really important not to get so focused and so emotionally attached to the timelines. This is a journey. If you're with someone that you really see yourself being with long term, what's the rush? You guys are going to be together forever, right? Till death do you part. So there's no need for things things to happen right away. But I do, having said that, understand that you're probably at a point in your relationship where you're really frustrated by certain things. If you're like me, I always say we hit rock bottom and yeah, I wanted to get out of there as fast as possible because this had been happening for years and years. But I always reminded myself, right, that those years and years that I left that, let that drag on, it's because I didn't have the skills and I didn't have the tools and I didn't know what to do. And I wasn't really trying, right? Like I was trying what I thought I needed to try, but I didn't have specific guidance. I didn't have a specific strategy on how to get us out of the situation we were in. So I made a commitment to myself that I would emotionally detached 
totally detached from the outcomes and just allow it to take the amount of time that it would need for things to get better in my relationship and trust that as I moved forward, I would get the clarity in terms of what I needed to do and if this was an appropriate amount of time to wait or not, the things would just unfold naturally. I've also emotionally detached from timelines because I continue to do the work on our relationship to this day, right? All of these things that I learned in the beginning to detach and make her relationship better, I still use them every single day in my relationship. So there is no timeline. These are just things that I do every single day to keep my relationship healthy, keep myself happy and fulfilled in life also, and to pursue my own passions. So there is no time on that. There is no time limit. There is no time goal. It's just part of this whole experience on this earth. So that's number one, detach from the timelines. Number two is I started to emotionally detach from what my partner did or did not do. At the beginning, obviously, I was so focused on and so attuned to every single little thing that he did. And that's fine. You want that in a relationship. But I was really letting it affect me. If he did something and it was what I wanted, then I was happy. If he did something that wasn't quite what I wanted, then I was unhappy. And I realized that that was having a really negative impact on my emotions. And you know what? At the end of the day, I don't have control over what my partner does or does not do. I only have control over how I feel about it. As a result, I emotionally detached by really starting to just focus on what I was doing. Am I showing up the way I wanted to show up in the relationship? Am I communicating effectively to my partner? Partner? Am I having fun in life? Am I fun to be around? And I have to say, just doing that changed things completely for us. The other thing I had to remember here to emotionally detach from what my partner did or did not do is that I was really focused on doing the work and I was all into, you know, I still am all into personal development and, you know, finding support and coaching and guidance on my journey. Whereas that's not something that my partner is so much into in the same way that I do it, right? He's on his own personal development journey. Journey, he's doing it his way. So I had to realize and I, I came to realize that just because he's doing it differently doesn't mean we're not going to grow together as a couple. But what it does mean is that he might not be, you know, we might not totally be in sync all the time. So maybe I'm changing my habits, but he's not changing his habits. Maybe I'm changing my reactions and responses to things, but he's not quite there yet. But I've noticed over time, the more I do it myself, for myself, for our relationship, the more he ends ended up reciprocating or also like mirroring what I was doing. I'm not saying here that if your partner, you know, doesn't meet your needs or doesn't do what you ask him ever, ever, then that's okay. And to just ignore that and to emotionally detach from that. But I want you to look at it from a bigger picture perspective. Is it circumstantial? Is it like all the time? Is it since the beginning, since day one, you guys have gotten together that everything he does or does not do, it doesn't meet your needs or is wrong, right? Or is it something that has happened or built or developed over time where you can look back and see, okay, what are these milestones in our relationship? where things kind of started to shift. And this can give you some clues in terms of what's going on. But what I'm saying at the end of the day is you don't want to be hyper-focused on every single little thing that he does or does not do because you're just going to drive yourself crazy with that. Side story, but still related to this. So my husband was sharing with me that TikTok that went viral, that orange peel TikTok that went viral. I don't know what the exact title of it was, but the whole idea was, would your partner peel an orange for you? And kind of what the message they were conveying is that love is shown kind of in the small things that you do and you can gauge the health of a relationship by whether or not your partner is willing to do those small things that you ask him to do or that you need him to do. And that's cool. That's awesome. But again, I don't want people to have the expectation that your partner is always going to do that, right? Just because one day he's not going to peel the orange for you doesn't mean that he will never peel the orange for you or that he's a bad person in general. You have to look at the bigger picture. So again, this is something I encourage you to do is to emotionally detach from every single single little thing and keeping tabs on that so that you can stay strong in your emotions and just live your life fully and show up fully in your relationship. The third way I've detached emotionally from my partner, and I talk about this all the time, is detaching from his moods. I've done a ton of videos on this, but I'll talk about it a little bit again today. But one of the best things I could do in my relationship and for myself personally and how I feel is to detach from every grumpy moment my partner was in, every moody, calm 
comment he made, every snarky, sarcastic remark. Again, you want to look at the bigger picture here. If this is something that's happening all the time and since day one, okay, maybe it is a problem. But if it's something that's been building over time or something very, again, circumstantial, so I want you to look at the bigger picture in terms of why this might be happening, then it could just be that, you know what, your man could be moody sometimes. I know I am married to a Scorpio. I am Cancer. I'm super sensitive and he can sting sometimes, right, with his personality, depending on if you believe in astrology. So I've come to accept that and to detach from that most of the time. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that I just ignore him all the time. If there's something, you know, sometimes he might be moody and there's a reason and maybe he's unable to communicate it or doesn't know how to communicate it in that moment. He's too overwhelmed by emotions. I will be there to listen and to be open to whether or not he wants to talk about it. But I don't let myself drown in his emotions. I remember whose emotions are whose. If he wants to talk, I let him talk. If he needs space, I give him space and I don't take these things personally. And the most important part is that I remain warm and calm when he does snap out of it. I don't make him feel bad for having a mood. And that's the beauty of being emotionally detached because it allows you to make rational choices and to take logical actions in your relationship. So the third way I've emotionally detached from my partner is to detach from his moods. And there you go. How do you feel about emotional detachment now? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Do you find yourself very emotionally attached to one, two, or three of these ways that I've talked about today? Which one do you feel you need to work on the most? And if this is something you'd like support with, I have a custom coaching program just for you. So make sure to click on the application link in the description and let's have a chat. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.